Welcome to this video lecture from JMI, the Jewish Music Institute. My name is Gil Karpus, Events and Marketing Manager for the JMI. In this lecture, you're going to hear from Professor Mark Kligman, the Mickey Katz Endowed Chair in Jewish Music at UCLA. We will now see and hear Professor Kligman's lecture entitled Syrian Judeo Arabic Music and Liturgy that he gave at JMI's Yalla, Judeo Arabic Music Conference that was held at SOAS University of London in February 2020. My name is Mark Kligman. I'm on the faculty at UCLA and hold the Mickey Katz Endowed Chair in Jewish Music. I had the pleasure of being part of the Yala Judeo-Arab Music Conference and Workshop, February 9th and 10th, this year at SOAS and hosted by the Jewish Music Institute. I am pleased to present to you my research on the Judeo-Arab connection of music and liturgy in the Syrian community in Brooklyn. My research was conducted in the 1990s, and I have continued to publish on music in the Syrian Jewish community. Their liturgy makes use of Arab music and aesthetics, which is at the heart of their cultural and religious connection to their heritage from Syria while living over 100 years in Brooklyn, New York. Jews have lived in Syria for a few thousand years, mainly in Damascus and Aleppo. The story in the community is that King David's general Yoav was told to conquer the north, and they are the descendants. Aleppo is known as Aram Tsoba in Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible. It is also called Halab, meaning milk. Damascus is known as Aram Damasek, mentioned several times. Walter Zenner's book, A Global Community, the Jews from Aleppo, Syria, published in 2000, includes a map indicating the Jewish communities around the world. While the population of the Jews from Syria was at its height in the 19th and early 20th century, the exact number is not known. We do know that the Jewish community from Aleppo was larger than Damascus. By 1900, economic conditions declined and migration of the community was well underway. Before 1948, the population of Syrian Jews was 30,000. Today, it is estimated that there are between 175,000 to 200,000 Syrian Jews worldwide, with over 100,000 in Israel and 75,000 in Brooklyn, New York. My research was in Brooklyn, New York. Prominent communities are also found in Mexico City and Latin America. Here is a musical example of the Syrian Bakashot tradition. After Sukkot, until Pesach, many Middle Eastern Jewish communities sing prayers of supplications, Bakashot, during the early morning hours before sunrise. This is a tradition maintained by Syrian Jews in Jerusalem, but has declined since the 1960s in Brooklyn. Here is a video recording that Los Angeles Syrian Jewish singer Asher Shashav Levi shared with me recently. This video provides an example of the Syrian Aleppo tradition from 50 years ago, displaying the solo singing of male singers and the communal singing responses.
While first settling in New York City's Lower East Side, today Brooklyn is home to Syrian Jews with over 40 institutions. The heart of the community is in Flatbush and stretches across Ocean Parkway from Avenues J to U and eastward to Coney Island Avenue. Mag and David is the oldest synagogue in Brooklyn located in Bensonhurst and built in 1920. As the community moved after World War II to Flatbush, larger synagogues were built, including Congregation Sha'are Tzion, home of the chief rabbi of the Syrian community, and Congregation Bet Torah, built in the 1970s. This is the synagogue that was the site of my research. The interior design of the synagogue as you enter the Beit Knesset to the far end is the Bima with the Luchot, opening words of the Ten Commandments, on the wall. The Hazan or prayer leader stands in the middle of the congregation on a platform. Above is a conical shaped design hanging from the ceiling representing a shofar. The prayers of the Hazan go into the shofar and rise to the heavens. In 1990, Kol Yisrael Synagogue was built at Avenue K and Bedford Avenue, east of the other two synagogues. The entrance has an arch design in the outer portico that is reminiscent of Turo Synagogue in Newport, Rhode Island, the oldest standing synagogue in America built by Western Sephardim in 1763. Progenitors of the Syrian Aleppo Hazanut tradition are Rabbi Raphael Antebi Tabush and Rabbi Moses Asher. Asher was a student of Tabush. Both were rabbis, Payatanim, and Hazanim. Asher came to New York in 1912 and served as the Hazan of the Magan David from its inception to his death in 1940. Rabbi Asher trained a generation of Hazanim, including members of the Tawil family. Moses and David Tawil are the youngest brothers in the Tawil family. They learned from their older brothers who were students of Asher. Along with Isaac Cabasso, these three men have trained the current generation of Syrian cantors. Moses and David Tawil have both passed away in the last few years. These three Hazanim were my main interlocutors for my study of the Aleppo Syrian tradition in Brooklyn. An important source of music in the Syrian tradition is the adaption of music from other sources, such as popular Arab music of the 20th century. A pizmon in the Syrian tradition is taken from an Arab song and then adapted to the liturgy. This example shows how the Arab song Hawad Minhina by Zaki Murad in the 1920s came into the Syrian liturgy. Listen to this song, Follow the four lines of the song in Arabic with the transliteration. Boy Barina is a Pismon, a Hebrew liturgical song based on Howard Minhina. You can see how Boy Barina carefully follows its Arab model with, with specific linguistic features. Look at the rhyme scheme of each line. You can see that Boy Barina, each line highlighted in green, carefully follows the rhyme structure of Hawad Minhina with Na in line one. See the red syllables. The Ta as the first rhyme in line two, followed by Na, and then Rach in lines three and four. In addition, notice that in line one of Boy Rina, with the, Europe, with the words Ya'ala Adina underlined in the slide, this follows the assonance of the equivalent line in Hawad Minhina with the words Ta'ala Indina. Clearly, 
Boibirina is closely structured by its Arab song model. Here is Boibirina, sung by Hazan Isaac Cabasso. Boy Berina, Yale Adina, Lebeti Ata, Bermeshkona, Lebeti Ata, Bermeshkona, Oi Bechbara, Yishaikbara. אורך זרח את לך איננה. The translation of both songs shows that Hawad Minhina is an unrequited love song. Boberina follows, but like Shir HaShirim, the biblical book Song of Songs, referring to a love for God as a woman. The Pismon takes the subject of the originating Arab song and adapts the text to a Hebrew love song for God. Since Jews lived in their own neighborhoods in Aleppo, similarly throughout the Ottoman Empire, known as Amela, they met with Arabs and Christians outside of the communities in coffee shops. Hearing the Arab music in their environment, they wanted to sing these songs. The rabbis rejecting the Arab carnal love songs, so an adaption of the Arab song to Hebrew words was the compromise. The melody of the pizmon is then set to a portion of the liturgy. Here is Hawad Minhina Boibirina melody sung to Shabbat Anayim, a part of the Sabbath liturgy also sung by Hazan Isaac Cabasso. Shabbat Anayim Atatishma Sakat had dal takshim vetoshia. Echatu branenu sadikim badunai lai sharim nevatehila. Arab vocal and music styles are grouped into categories. There are two styles of Quranic recitation. Muratal and Mujawad. Here is an example of the more ornate Mujawad style of Quranic recitation. <laughs> Improvisation in Arab music is found in two forms in the opening section of a musical piece. Mawal in instrumental music and Lageli in vocal music. Song genres are complex in Arab music, particularly in art forms like the Ka'asid and the Muwashahat. In addition to these forms, Syrian liturgy also adapts from the Dwar and the Taktuka. In this talk, I'm not able to go into further detail on these points. If you are interested, you can consult my book and Kay Kaufman Shalemay's book, Let Jasmine Rain Down. The Syrian Shabbat morning service makes use of various musical styles and forms. This chart shows that the six parts of the service are unique and that they each adapt specific Arab music styles to a part of the liturgy. The main makam that is used is siga. I'll explain the aspects of the makam system shortly. The basic description is that it is the modal system used in Arab music. Makam siga is used for the introductory prayers and for musaf in a formulaic fashion. This depiction shows the overall structure and the unique aspects of the use of makam of the day. Where most of the service is done in the same way, the same prayers with the same siga recitation formula, shacharit, the main portion of the morning service with statutory prayers, the Shema and the Amidah, uses a different makam from week to week. The makam is determined by the biblical reading.
when we think of a scale in Western music, we look at the use of half steps and whole steps, where a major scale is distinct from a minor scale. For some makamat, a quarter step is used. For example, Makam Rost uses an E quarter flat, which is lower than an E natural and higher than an E flat. Here is a representation of 11 makamat used in, the, in Syrian liturgy. In Arab music, many more makamat are used since a makam can have many variants. For example, makam bayat from D to D with an E quarter flat can start on the upper D and is called muhayr, or it can start on an A, the fifth note of the makam, and is called Husseini. Syrian liturgy makes use of some variants, but certainly not all. You will note that Ajam, the first makam listed from B flat to B flat, is equivalent to a Western major scale, and Nahawand, the fourth makam listed in the chart, is equivalent to a Western natural minor scale. In a more refined explanation of a makam, it is important to mention that not only does it have spe specific notes, but also a collection of motifs and phrases. Also, some makamat have extra musical associations, often connected to affect. A unique feature to Syrian liturgy is the connection of a makam to the biblical reading. This chart is a replication of two of the five books of Moses, the Torah, for Breshit, Genesis, and Shemot, Exodus. The makam designated is not how the Torah is read that week. Rather, the makam determines melodies to be used during the Hazan's prayers during Shacharit. During the week of Breshit, the makam is Rast, and the next week it is Siga. This means from week to week, different melodies are used during the Shacharit prayers, providing interest and variety to the congregation. The choice of the makam is governed by four principles, theory, affect, holiday, or variety. Rost is the makam used to explain Arab music, theory, much like C major in Western music. Therefore, the primordial beginning of each of the five books of the Bible begins with Rost. Affect determines the use of Hijaz and Ajam. Hijaz is used for sadness, as in Hayasara 1.5, when Matriarch Sarah dies, and Kitisa 2.9, when the Golden Calf is built. Ajam is used for happy occasions, such as in Bishalach 2.4, when the Israelites cross the splitting of the Red Sea. Holiday determines the use of certain makamat, like bayat, for the Jewish holiday of Tu Bishvat, the 15th day of the month of Shabbat in January or February. If this holiday takes place during the week of Shemot 2.1, bayat is used because melodies associated with Tu Bishvat are sung during Shacharit, and the ras that should, be, that should have been used because of theory would take place the following week. Variety determines the use of the many other makamat, so that week to week there are different makamat. Do note that extra musical associations are common in Arab music, but applied somewhat differently. For Syrian Jews, hijaz is a sad makam, but in Arab musical practice, hijaz is used for wedding music. The connection between the recitation of Shacharit service and the styles of the recitation of the Quran is seen in this chart. The reading of the Torah each week is in Makam Siga and is similar to the basic form of Quran recitation, Muratal. <laughs> Shacharit, which I will play in example next, is 
in the more complicated Mujawad style. The Shahari portion of the service includes seven portions where the Hazan sings an adapted song. Nishmat Kolhai is where the Hazan begins this portion of the service. After a few lines of this text, the Hazan improvises in the Makam. He is allowed to modulate to other Makamat, but the Makam of the day must be prominent. The designation of heavy or light describes the musical style, with heavy being a more formal song genre, such as a drawer, and a light genre would most likely be an upbeat song genre, like a taktuka. The designation of the first, middle, and last as pillars indicates the prominence of these prayers in the liturgy. Charts such as this circulate in printed books and in handwritten manuscripts showing the seven liturgical singing stations and a designated text within a makam that could be sung. For instance, if the makam of the day is Ras, the Hazan could use the melody of Mahalalach for the liturgical text Nishmat Kochai. Then Magen Yeshi can be used for Shavat Aniyim. In between the end of Nishmat Kochai and the start of Shavat Aniyim, the Chazan would improvise. Here is an example of Chazan David Shiro at a recreated service filmed in 1999 at the liturgical text indicated with the arrow. Before he ends this portion at the sentence with the words Va'ani ve'evyon megzelo, the Chazan slows down, indicating something new is coming next. In this video, Hazan Moses Tawil was standing to the right, and Hazan Shiro paused for Hazan Tawil to initiate the song to be sung for Shavat Aniyim. During this session, all of the liturgical singing stations were sung in Makam Bayat. The congregation does not know which melody. When you listen to this example, note that Hazan Tawil sings the first few words alone, and once the congregation realizes the tune, they join along. <laughs> The organization of the liturgical singing stations is similar to the Watts Law, the Arab Suite. In a program of Arab music, musicians play several selections all in the same maqam, moving sequentially from slow genres to faster genres. The design is similar for Shacharit, but the difference is liturgical demands of the text do not allow the sequential progression from slower to quicker melodies. To more fully articulate the Judeo-Arab synthesis in Syrian liturgy, this diagram displays various elements. On the right, you see the Jewish elements of the liturgy, such as biblical, rabbinic, and paraliturgical texts. On the left, the Arab elements are depicted, such as Arab songs, Quranic recitations, and aesthetics. The liturgy is positioned in the middle as a comfortable negotiation of Jewish and Arab elements. A Syrian Sabbath service synthesizes Jewish and Arab elements. 
Jewish law does not dictate melodies or the style of music. Jewish communities throughout the world have differing ways to chant and recite prayers. Having lived in Syria for thousands of years, adhering to their Arab music styles makes Syrian Jewish liturgy its own unique example of the contact of Jewish ritual tradition and Arab culture. Extra musical associations, the design of the Watts Law, and spontaneous aspects of improvisation are all adapted in the Syrian Jewish tradition. Islamic prayer is private, so few Islamic elements are the source. In Syrian Jewish liturgy, secular Arab music is a significant influence. With Rabbi Raphael and Tebi Tabush as the progenitor of the Aleppo Syrian tradition, Brooklyn is now home to its fourth generation of Chazanim. I studied with members of the third generation prominent in the 1960s through the 1980s. Now their grandchildren are the present generation of Chazanim. In fact, they are meticulously maintaining the tradition through this website called pismonim.org. On this site, texts of the pismonim are found with various examples of many Hazanim singing the text. The application to the liturgy is central to this site as, in the, as instructions are provided to the adaptation of a pismon to the liturgy through a makam. This page shows how makam ajam could be used in the liturgy. Syrian Jews in Brooklyn are proud of their heritage. They are often described as an insular community as they maintain their own educational institutions and Syrian Jews tend to marry other Syrian Jews. As the community has grown in New York, they have certainly become part of New York City with prominent businesses and contributors to the city. While there may be few opportunities to express their Arab heritage in day-to-day -day life, it is significant that during their Sabbath prayers, maintaining their Arab heritage is part of their practice. Their Judeo-Arab synthesis is at the cornerstone of their religious lives. Thank you.